Hello, my name is Marilyn Roberts. I'm a professor at the University of Washington in Washington State, USA. Today I'm going to talk to you about basic mechanisms of antibiotic resistance and gene spread, and a very important topic in today's public health. Antibiotics have been one of the most important discoveries of the 20th century. They have transformed human and animal medicine and have saved countless numbers of lives. However, use, overuse, and abuse of antibiotics at both human and agricultural levels have created resistant organisms as well as multi-resistant bacteria, often called superbugs. These organisms are no longer susceptible to therapy. The concern is that as more and more antibiotic resistant bacteria develop, we're entering a post-antibiotic era where practices used prior to the introduction of antibiotic therapy will be required. These include things like removing infected organs or amputation. Antibiotics are primarily used against bacterial diseases and are the least toxic of all the anti-infective agents. Antiviral, antiparasitic, and antifungal agents are often more toxic because they work on specific pathways that are very similar to the host. Antibiotics work on specific pathways needed for bacterial growth. Penicillin was introduced in 1945, and by 1950s, antibiotics were widely used for treatment of a variety of diseases. There are over 30 different antibiotics that are currently used for human and animal medicine. And agricultural use of antibiotics occurred about the same time as human use. Antibiotics are used to prevent and treat disease both in humans and in agriculture. However, in North America and other locations, antibiotics are used in low dose, which are below therapeutic levels, as growth promoters. That is, it was thought that using these antibiotics in feed helps the animals to increase their conversion of food into muscle. This practice is no longer used in the EU, and there is considerable discussion and hope that this practice will be phased out in North America. In many countries, 50 to 70 percent of all antibiotics used in a year is because of agricultural use rather than human use. For example, in the country of Chile, tenfold higher amounts of quinolones are used for agriculture and aquaculture than they are for human use. Antibiotic resistant genes and antibiotic resistant bacteria transfer between man, animals, and the environment. Antibiotics and antifectives work directly on the pathways which produce DNA, RNA, proteins, cell walls, and other pathways needed for survival and growth. Antibiotics are broken into two groups, and bacterial static antibiotics inhibit bacterial growth without killing in vitro. If you remove the drug, the bacteria are able to grow. In contrast, bacterial cytal drugs kill the organism in the laboratory, and if you remove the drug, the bacteria are not able to regrow. However, in vivo, antibiotics work in concert with the human immune system or the animal immune system. Antibiotics cannot cure infections without the immune system of the host. Antibiotic resistant bacteria clinical importance is a product of antibiotic use by man over the last 60 years. Penicillin resistant Staph aureus was isolated within a year of the introduction of penicillin in therapy. Today there are some multi-drug resistant pathogens that have few or no available therapies. Three of these are Staph, Staph aureus, Enterococci species, and Streptomonia. All of these are gram-positive bacteria. In addition, the parasite Plasmodium, which causes malaria, has very few therapies left in some parts of the world. Today, there are very few new antibiotics available for clinical use. Those that are coming down the pipeline are usually modifications of existing antibiotics. The problem with this is that bacteria that are already resistant to the first generation drugs find it easier and faster to become resistant to second and third generation drugs. In 2001, the U.S. had a anthrax scare where people, somebody was putting anthrax through the mail. 
Nature responded to this by saying the simplest way to enhance a bacterial bioweapon is to make it resistant to antibiotics. Had the anthrax being sent through the mail been resistant, virtually everybody who was exposed would have died. Today there is technology available so that most agents that are, have bioweapon potential could be being made antibiotic resistant. However, man is not the only perpetrator of resistance for bioweapons. Nature can also make resistant pathogens. For example, isolates of Yersinia pestis have been uh, identified that are multi-drug resistant, including resistance to doxycycline, which is the therapy of choice. Therefore, bioweapons can be man-made to become resistant, but also can be selected in nature to become resistant. There are two types of antibiotic resistance. Acquired resistance is when some members of the species have acquired the ability to grow in the presence of high levels of antibiotics. And if you compare strains from the 1900s and today, the 1900 strains are in fact susceptible to drugs, while the recent strains have become resistant. Usually the resistance is due to acquisition of new genes, which produce new proteins. In contrast, other strains and organisms are innately resistant, which means they're physiologically resistant due to the fact that they lack the target for the antibiotic to interact with, the target has been modified, they have prevent the target antibiotic from entering the cell and they can't interact with the internal structure, or they increasingly export the drug so that the drug cannot interact and prevent growth of the organism. In this case, all members of the species are resistant whether they were isolated in the 1990s, whether they were isolated in the 1800s, or they were isolated today. Bacteria, viruses, fungi, yeast, parasites, and even cancer cells will all develop resistance to therapies over time due to mutations which alter or delete targets that are interacting with the antibiotic. But bacteria also acquire resistance by transformation, transduction, and conjugation. This allows the bacteria and the bacterial population to quickly become resistant and multi-drug resistant. They also can acquire heavy metal resistance, resistance to disinfectants, and or acquire new virulence genes, which can actually make them a better pathogen. There are two types of bacterial resistance. That's due to mutational or acquired. Both can happen in the same bacteria host at the same time, but acquired resistance usually confers high level resistance versus mutational, which is usually moderate level. Acquired resistance usually occurs quickly with a single event, usually to have clinically uh, important resistant mutations have to be multiple. Acquired resistance adds new genes and new proteins, whereas mutational changes existing structures. Acquired resistance is usually associated with mobile elements, which can quickly spread from strain to strain and from species to species, and even from uh, one micro environment to another. In mutational, transfer is usually due to replication and transfer is to daughter cells. This is limited to very closely related strains and its clinical importance can vary by the organism and the drug that we're talking about. With acquired, it's often linked to a number of different other genes. It's a single event and can be transferred quickly from strain to strain and from species to species. In most cases, clinical resistance that is important has been due to acquired resistance versus mutational resistance. Low doses of antibiotics, such as those used as growth promoters, can increase the rate of development and carriage of drug-resistant bacteria in man, animals, and the environment. Conjugation is the most common way antibiotic-resistant genes move from strain to strain from species to species and from one environment to another. Once a resistant gene has been introduced or developed in a bacteria, it can spread across the world into a variety of different microbial environments from animals to man to the environment and back again. There's a variety of ways bacteria can acquire resistant genes. Three have been 
well described. Transformation was first identified back in the 1930s. Here, bacteria acquire naked DNA and integrate them into their chromosome, creating mosaic genes with increased resistance. Today, over 80 species have been identified that are naturally transformable. Of course, in the laboratory, we can make other organisms transformable, but it's not clear whether these are able to pick up DNA under natural conditions. Transduction uses phage to transport DNA from the host to a second host. What happens is that the host DNA is packaged instead of the phage DNA, and when it injects into the next host, host DNA is delivered. The last is conjugation, and it is from cell to cell mediated gene transfer where the recipient and the donor both have to be viable. Transformation occurs only between closely related strains and species. Transduction occurs only among very closely related strains. In contrast, conjugation has a much broader host range. There are conjugation elements that have narrow uh, host range, which only can occur within species, or there are broad host range elements which can have host ranges spanning both gram-positive and gram-negative, and in some cases even into eukaryotic organisms. This is partially why conjugation plays such an important role for gene exchange uh, when it comes to spread of antibiotic-resistant genes. Plasmids in bacteria are usual, usually small circles, though linear bacteria also exist. Transposons and conjugative transposons um, are also found, and integrons are found. Now it turns out that eukaryotic organisms also have these kinds of elements. However, bacteria are the only organisms that have utilized these different elements to transfer antibiotic resistant genes. Therefore, plasmids found in yeast do not uh, are not associated with antibiotic resistant genes. Similar transposons and integrons in higher organisms do not appear to be associated with antibiotic resistant uh, gene development. Plasmids are generally circular. They can replicate either independently or can become integrated into chromosomes and rep replicate with the chromosome. Transposons and conjugated transposons are found on plasmids and in the chromosome. Both plasmids and conjugated transposons carry the genetic uh, information to allow them to, to transfer from one cell to another or from one place on the cell to another. Integrons are found on plasmids and in chromosomes and have the ability to acquire new genes in a fashion similar to stamp collecting. In fact, super integrons have been found where 50 to 100 genes are uh, lined up in a single structure. Genetic elements allow gene exchange to occur within bacteria and ecosystems, and it allows the bacteria within that ecosystem to become resistant either by acquiring single or most multiple genetic elements and genes in one event. Once a drug-resistant gene appears in a bacteria, even if it's not on an element that is thought to be mobile, at least by laboratory standards, it can be transferred to other organisms and around the world into different ecosystems, into humans, animals, and the environment. And we've even found these genes in obligate intercellular species, which have to grow within cells. This is a picture of some of the um, genes that confer resistance. Some genes um, produce pumps that pump the drug out. A lot of other genes produce enzymes which inactivate the antibiotic. Some genes produce enzymes which alter targets such as the cell wall or particular structures such as the ribosome. There's a variety of different mechanisms which are beyond the scope of this particular talk. Why are resistant genes important? Newer antibiotics can be much more costly and may not be available. Therapy can be longer, hospital stays can be increased, and in, in extreme cases, there's no therapy available, either because of the cost of the antibiotic or because the antibiotic does not exist in the country 
or does not exist in the world. Generally, antibiotic resistant bacteria are not better pathogens, but there are exceptions. For example, the 2012 German outbreak E. coli 0104H4 was actually a multi-drug resistant bacteria that had a number of added virulence factors, so it in fact was a better pathogen than many other related organisms. Where antibiotic resistant genes are found and where these bacteria are found are pretty pervasive. Farm animals, fish, fruit, vegetables, processed food, pet food, farm animals, food, man, pets in their environment, all can have antibiotic resistant bacteria and all can have antibiotic resistant genes. Agriculture and aquaculture environments, water, air, and now soil. Re recreational waters, beaches and parks. We find antibiotic resistant genes and bacteria in sewage treatment plants even in the effluent that is expelled into the environment. And in fact, we now believe that the effluent from sewage treatment plants may be an important source of antibiotic resistant contamination into the environment, which may ultimately come back into the food and back into man. Antibiotic resistant bacteria and antibiotic resistant genes have been found in the Arctic and the Antarctic and in virtually every wild animal that has been looked at. There are some examples which demonstrate that antibiotic resistant genes transfer from man to animals and from man to animals in the environment. One of the best examples is vancomycin resistant enterococci, or VRE. In the EU, Ava Parson was used as a growth promoter back in the 80s. And what happened was enterococci became vancomycin resistant in the animals. They then spread to people as well as the environment, and then ultimately came into the community. In contrast, in the US, Ava Parson was never used, but vancomycin was used extensively in the hospital environment. So VRE developed first in the hospital environment in North America and has now spread into the environment and the community. MRSA strain such as ST398 ancestrally is a human isolate. It went into pigs where it picked up the MEC gene and developed the ability to transfer from pig to pig but also back to people. So this strain went from human to pigs to pigs and then back to people. MRSA is known to be able to spread from man to their pets and back again. So animals may end up with human MRSA strains and vets that treat animals that are uh, pet animals often carry MRSA from human sources whereas if they treat animals from livestock animals they will usually pick up MRSA from the livestock and have livestock type of MRSA. Many years ago bacterial resistance due to a raw plasmid developed in man in Haemophilus influenza which is unique to only humans but it's now been transferred to animal um, species which are only unique to animals. So clearly bacteria that are unique to animals and unique to people have an intermediary which can transfer from human to that intermediary and then off to animals. In some cases bacterial resistance first developed in the environment and then spread to animals and man. So it's very clear it doesn't matter where the antibiotic resistance occurs it will spread to humans, animals, and the environment given time. Antibiotics in food. Even though antibiotics are not usually treat, used to treat diarrheal diseases such as O157 and Shigatox producing E. coli, Salmonella and Shigella, these bacteria are normally drug resistant and often multi-drug resistant. In fact, in fact Salmonella that were multi-drug resistant were the very first drug resistant isolates to be identified in the 1950s in Japan. They were resistant to tetracycline, chloramphenicol, and ampicillin. Today they're still resistant to these three classes of drugs and a variety of other. What makes it more important is that it was shown back in the 1950s that these organisms can transfer their genetic genes to the patient's normal flora. So increasing the normal flora drug resistance can occur. 
Similarly, things like Neisseria monocytogenes, Vibrio, and Yersinia are often um, carriers of antibiotic resistant genes, which can transfer these genes to the normal gut flora or to other um, parts of the um, microbiome. There's a close temporal relationship between use of drugs for food production and ultimate drug resistance. For example, fluoroquinolone therapy in poultry was identified with increase in fluoroquinolone resistant Campylobacter disease in patients in the US, Spain, and Netherlands. It's thought that a lot of the Campylobacter disease was due to the ingestion of Campylobacter contaminated poultry. Multi drug resistant Salmonella DT104 was disseminated across Europe and in, in the US in both humans and man. When they looked at the resistant genes, they found that the florin fenicol gene and the tetracycline gene originally came from Vibrio species, probably from aquaculture farms in the Far East. So that the disease that was occurring in the US and Europe, the antibiotic resistant genes actually came from aquaculture, waterborne bacteria from the Far East and made their way into Salmonella DT104 that caused disease and major outbreaks in humans and animals in Europe and the US. Summary. Use of antibiotics selects for bacterial resistance, which then can spread by horizontal gene transfer to other bacteria and ecosystems around the world. They can spread from waterborne systems to land systems, from animals to man, from man to animals, and from man and animals to environment. Antibiotic practices in any one country impacts the world's burden of drug-resistant bacteria and their genes. Changes in antibiotic usage around the world is needed, not only for human, but agriculture and aquaculture, to, to prevent us reaching a post-antibiotic era where most treatable infections will no longer be treatable.